see Dumplin' these California nights have a wonderful climate. It's lovely, isn't it? Imagine in New York now it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> Let's sit down, Peg. All right. You are resting here through the courtesy of Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. He gets around, doesn't he? If we had more undertakers like Digger, we'd have nicer parts. Mm -hmm. Hey, Peg. Look at that moon. Mm. Let's get romantic. And let that movie we saw go to your head. Gee, that was a nice movie. Mm. Just imagine. When the hero started out, he was just an ignorant laborer. And he waked himself up to be a bank millionaire. So true to life. Now, don't get any crazy ideas. It can't happen to you. Why not? I'm just as ignorant as that laborer was when he started. <laughs> Boy, it'd be great to be rich. Yeah. You know, I wish I had some capital so I could go into business. Now, Raleigh, you haven't got a business head. You just do your job and forget any ideas about business. I'm only thinking of you and the kids. You know, Badge is going to get married one of these days. And I'd like you to get a high-class type fella. Every girl can be as lucky as I was, dear. Gee, it's nice of you to say that, Peg. I wonder if Babs will be as lucky as you was. It's possible. She knows dozens of nice boys. Nice boys? That's Simon Vanderhopper. Riley, Simon's a nice boy. He's a lazy loafer. He's not a loafer. He works hard every day and he goes to school at night. <laughs> Nineteen years old and still going to school. I was out of school when I was 14. Yeah, but Simon wants to finish. <laughs> Tell me something, Peg. The truth now. Does my Babs ever have any dates with that Simon? You know I forbid her. Well, you didn't actually forbid her, you Well, know. if it was my daughter, I'd forbid her. <laughs> Gillis, what are you doing in the park? Gophers are out of season. Very humoresque. Mr. Gillis, what we were discussing was our own private family affairs. Correct. And I apologize for butting in. After all, is it my business if your daughter is in the front room with that Simon? You're right, it ain't your business. <laughs> Simon? Hey, has my poor innocent Babs got a date with that Simon? Well, yes, they're spending the evening at home. Come on, there's no time to... Now, Riley, stop worrying, just because you get ideas in your head. I'm not worrying about the ideas in my head. I'm worrying about the ideas in Simon's head. Come on. Captain Popcorn? No, thank you. Now, Simon, you go home. If my father catches you here... But I've got a right to be here. My intentions are honorable. I want to make you Mrs. Simon Vanderhoff. Oh, stop this nonsense. But it's not nonsense. After all, I've got a good job in that fish market. And I'm ambitious. I'm studying accounting at night. Well, I didn't know that, Simon. Good for you. Sure, and you're the reason I'm ambitious. All day long in the market, while I'm icing the fish, I dream only of you. I love you, Bab. I love you madly. Oh, never mind that, Simon. Tell me about your accounting course. Can you run a comptometer? Oh, you bet I can. Look at a bank statement I made up in school last night. You know, for practice. Oh, why, this is very good, Simon. It looks just like a real bank statement. Total seven thousand. Gee, for Simon, you don't actually have $7,000 in the bank, do you? Oh, no, it's just an example. I only have $7 in the bank. Someday I'll be rich, you'll see, and when that day comes... Simon, my father! Well, I'm not afraid of your father. Let's live dangerous. But he's on the porch! Well, where I hide? <laughs> As soon as my back is turned, you disobey me. Where is he? Where's who, Daddy? You know who. That's so full over. That's who. Oh, Riley, stop it. You can see for yourself he isn't here. He ain't? Well, excuse me. I apologize. Yes, well, uh, come on. Let's get to bed. I'm tired. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mother. It's time you were in bed, too, young lady. Oh, I think I'll stay up and, and study a while. Okay. But remember what I told you about that Simon Vanderhub. Good night, honey. Good night, Mom. Daddy. Mom. Simon. Simon, they're gone. Now you get out of here right away. I can't. I'm wedged in. I'll try to pull the couch out. Babs. Daddy. Babs, did you see my slippers? 
What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing, Daddy. Did you lose something? Oh, I, I think my bag's back here. No, it ain't. It's up here on the mantelpiece. Oh, I didn't mean that one. My other one, the alligator bag. Oh, your alligator bag. I'll get it for you. Oh, no, no, Daddy. It's all right. I, I can find it. No, no, I'll get it for you. I can get it for you easy. I got a longer reach. Go to bed, Daddy. I'll get it tomorrow. I got something. What is my slipper doing behind the couch? Your, your slipper? I got it. I got it. The bag must be open. I can feel your comb. What kind of a comb have you got? Such large teeth. Daddy, stop. Oh! That alligator bit me. There's someone behind here. Daddy, you've met Simon. Simon, my father. How do you do? How do you... Simon! No, wait, Daddy! Simon, get out of this house! Yes, sir, I'm going, I'm going. That was the most horrible, humiliating, mortifying experience I have ever had in my entire life! Oh! That's the thanks I get for trying to protect this tank that in my home. Morning, Peg. Is it? Hurry up, Babs. We'll be late for Grandma's. I'm coming, Mother. Good morning, honey. Hello. Hurry, Junior. We'll be late. Hi, Pop. How's everything? A little icy, son. I feel like I was sitting in a refrigerator. So I noticed. Mom, how come you and Babs aren't speaking to Pop? None of your affair, Junior, so please stay out of it. All I know is that I was never so mortified humiliated and degraded in my entire life as I was last night by some person right here in this room. When a person is mortified by another person, the other person doesn't deserve to be spoken to by another person. <laughs> Let's go, Mother. I'm ready. Come on, Junior. You go ahead, Mom. I'll catch up with you. Bye. Keep up. You're sure in a soup. And now, take my advice, Junior. Never marry a woman. Okay, anything you say. Hey, what's the idea only one slipper? I didn't feel like digging behind that couch for the other one. See if it's there, will you, Junior? Sure. Yeah, here it is. Something else back here, too. Not that Simon again. Oh, it's a, it's a paper. It says how much money you got from the bank. In that case, it can't be mine. No. It's Simon's. Yeah, see? Simon. What is that good for nothing doing with a bank account? Let me see this. Oh, I gotta go, Pop. See ya. That chiseler's got more than 62 cents. Seven thousand dollars! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Who's got seven thousand dollars? Why, <laughs> What's the matter with you, Gillis? Riley, don't try to hide that bank statement. Who's got seven thousand dollars? <laughs> Why, that sweet darling boy, Simon Vanderhoff. <laughs> Very interesting. Let me see it. Valley Bank, Simon Vanderhoff. Wow. Look at these deposits. 500, 350, 900, withdrawn $2. He must be a light either. Kill it. Look at the balance. The balance. 7,000 bucks. Where did that joke get all his cash? It comes as no surprise to me. I always said that that sweet darling boy had brains. He must have some terrific secret job. I wish I knew what it was. I know. Last night, while I was peeking in the window, I heard Simon say something to Babs about the market. The market? The stock market. He's playing the stock market. <laughs> That's it, all right. That's the way to make real big dough. Boy, won't Peg and Babs be surprised when they hear this. Wait a minute, Riley. For the time being, I, I think it's better they shouldn't know that this lazy loafer is a financial genius. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, you know, women. The minute they find out a man saves up a little capital, right away they try to push him into some kind of business. Well, what's wrong with going into business? Nothing, pal, provided it's a safe investment and the president of the firm knows all about the fiscal fiduciary. <laughs> You're right. It's hard to make a safe investment. You're right, friend. That's why you're going into business and giving Simon the opportunity to be your partner. The partner that supplies the dough. 
But wait a minute, Gillis. I can't use Simon's dough. Don't be so ignorant, Riley. How do you suppose millionaires get rich? By using other people's money, that's how. Yeah. Yeah. But what does Simon get out of this? Experience. And that's worth paying for, ain't it? Yeah. Sure it is. But if Simon supplies the money, what do I supply? Oh, in all partnerships, there's always two things. Assets and liabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Simon supplies the assets, and I supply the liabilities. No, <laughs> oh, you're a big man in this house. You comfortable? This is an overstock chair. Yes, thanks. Uh, maybe you'd feel more at home behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. When I got your call, I couldn't understand it. I thought you were mad at me. Me mad at you? Imagine me mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> Let bygones be gone. Get to the deal, pal. Get to the deal. Okay. Uh, Simon, partner, I hear you've been playing around. Oh, no, Mr. Riley. It's serious. I really love your daughter. I don't mean that. I mean, I hear you've been playing around in the market. Well, no, sir. I don't play around down there. That's hard work. Oh, I bet it is. Uh, how did you do yesterday? Oh, same as usual. I cleaned them. Oh, that's great. Uh, how much did you clean up? 300 fish. <laughs> fish. Uh, what did you do with them? I salted them away. Good for you, Simon. That's the way to get ahead. 7,300 is 7,300. Yeah. Good for you, Simon. Oh, thank you, sir, but I I'm not really satisfied. I'm only doing this until I can get into something bigger. Oh, now, that's the kind of talk that me and Riley like to hear. Simon, we're going to do something for you. Huh? Me and Riley are going to let you be our partner in a new business. Partner? Gee, oh, boy! What about money? I don't have enough. Oh, don't worry. You've got enough. Whatever you got is enough. Oh, by the way, a uh, little gift. A new wallet for everybody. Oh. Nice and roomy, too. Just what we need. Oh, thank you. But, Mr. Riley, I I've only... Now, my boy, let us worry about the money. First, you put up your capital, and we'll put up the brains and the stationery. Oh, well, that's different. Yes, sir. Gee. Me and Riley have had our eye on a new business for a long time now. An antique shop downtown. Antique shop? Yeah, of course. Uh, when we take over, we're getting rid of all them old chairs and tables. And we're going to put in a new line of chromium furniture. It'll be a modern antique shop. Well, that sounds like a very novel idea. When do we start? Oh, we got to act right away. Someone else is liable to snap it up. Well, I'll go right away and get my money. Swell. And Simon Dolan, when you come back, it'll be Riley, Gillis, and Van der Hopper and Bill. <laughs> yes, sir. Gillis, Riley, and Van Hopper. Gee, Van der Hopper, Riley, and Gillis. <laughs> and this is only the beginning. We're starting small, but someday we'll be known from coast to coast. We'll be an institution. Imagine. Here we are in this room today, and tomorrow we'll be in an institution. <laughs> well, goodbye, partner, and goodbye, goodbye partner. partner. Goodbye, partner. So long, partner. Gee, what a wonderful kid. I always loved that, Simon. Yeah. Now sit down here and write a letter that I'm going to dictate. Write a letter to who? Stevenson, the big boss at the plant. But I don't owe him a letter. He never writes me. You don't get it, Riley. This is a letter of resignation from your job. You're going into business for yourself. Yeah. Boy, will I tell that skin flint off. What do I say? Let me see. Dear slave driver. <laughs> oh, dear. Boy, I'd like to see his face. <laughs> oh, there you are. Where'd you disappear to? I had to go out and mail a letter. Hey, Peg, how come you're talking to me? Well, I can't spend the rest of my life not talking to you, dear. Gee, that's swell. I was worried. What'd you have to mail a letter now for? Couldn't I wait till after lunch? Not this letter. This was an important letter. Uh, I didn't want to tell you before, Peg, but something happened this morning. What do you mean, what happened? Well, remember I always told you that someday Mr. Stevens would find out the kind of ability I really got. Riley, you got fired. No, I resigned. That was the letter I mailed. You what? 
I resigned. And not only that, but I told that Stevenson what I thought of him. You must be out of your mind. What in the world possessed you to do that? Well, Peg, remember I always said I'd like to go into business for myself. Business? How can you go in business? That takes capital. I got it. Seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand? How could you get seven thousand? From my partner. What partner? The nicest partner a man ever had. Who? Simon Vanderhopper. Simon? That nincompoop? No, wait a minute, Peg. You're speaking about the nicest nincompoop that oh, I ever... Oh, Riley, you better get to bed. You're sick, dear. Oh, please, Peg, it's all set. Here, look. I found this. It's a bank statement. Simon, he's got $7,000 in the bank. He's going to take that money and we're all going into business. Gillis, me, and Simon. Look, I know I sound crazy, Peg, but when Simon gets here with the money, I'll prove it. Oh, but Riley, Simon with $7,000. It sounds very fishy to me. Hey, will you stop worrying? I'm no kid. <laughs> there he is now. Now you'll see. Come in, partner. Hello, partner. Hi, Hello, Mrs. Pal. Partner. Hello. <laughs> Hiya, partners. Saw Simon on the porch where he dropped in. Come into the office. Right this way, partner. Right this way. Take your chair. Thank you. Give J.V. a cigar. Yes, have a cigar, S.V. Thank you. Well, uh, partner, did you bring your assets, my little go-getter? Oh, yes, sir, every cent. That will teach you to be a doubting tomcat pig. Okay, Simon, produce the capital and let's start counting. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? I'll check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Correct. Isn't it remarkable? These $1,000 bills look just like... $1,000 bills. Simon, what happened to the zeros? Something wrong? Where's the rest of the money? There's only seven bucks here. Well, that's all I had in my piggy bank. But Simon, your bank statement here. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, that's nothing. That's just an example from my accounting course. I made up one today for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Simon. Get out of this house. <laughs> Mr. Riley, aren't we partners? You just said I was a go-getter. Well, go get out of this house. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Riley, you've made a terrible mistake. He's a forger as well as a daughter stealer. How could you do such an insane thing? If the boys at the plant ever find out about this, we'll be ribbed all over the place. Yeah, I almost hate to go to work Monday. Maybe you won't have to go to work Monday. What do you mean I won't have to go to work? Didn't you write a letter of resignation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, what a relief. You know, Gillis! Stevenson, when he reads that letter, I'll be fired. I ain't saved any money, I'll starve. Well, don't blame me. You should never write such a nasty letter to the boss. But I only wrote what you told me to kill us. Well, you didn't have to, did you? Ain't you got no willpower? You and your deals. You owe me a buck for that wallet. What a revolting development this <laughs> Riley, you've got to stop mooning around the house. Now, it's Monday morning. You should be at work. Here's your lunchbox. Peg, I don't think I can go to work. That Stevenson's probably reading my letter right now. And when he reads that I resigned, he'll fire me. Why did I ever have to call him a weasel? Now, listen, you're going to march right into Mr. Stevenson's office and apologize. I will not apologize to that weasel. Never. <laughs> oh, Daddy, how do you get into these jams? How do I get into these jams? This is all your fault, young lady. If you hadn't have brung that Simon in here, I wouldn't be in the jam I'm in now. Now, listen, oh. you stop picking on her. You know very well this whole thing is your fault. That's right, Peg. Take her side. You're always taking her side. But I deserve some consideration, too. After all, Peg, I was here before she was. Oh, darling, now stop this kind of talk. Come on. Uh, it's not that I blame Babs. It's just that, well, it's that Simon. If I could get my hands on him, Peg. Good morning. Good morning. Is Babs in? Yeah, she's around. Simon! 
Get out of this house. But I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. You're willing to let bygones be. Riley, behave yourself. Now. I brought you a present from our market, a barracuda. You and your barracuda, get out of here. But I'm your friend. I'm always doing you favors. Don't do me any favors. Get out. I just sent you one. I met the mailman on the way over here. You mailed the letter the other day and forgot to put a stamp on it. I forgot to put a stamp on the letter? Yeah. The postman was going to bring it over to you, but I told him I'd take care of it. Peg, Peg, did you hear that? I forgot to put a stamp on the letter. Or was it an important letter? Was it an important letter? The most important letter I ever wrote in my life. That's what I thought. So I gave the postman 18 cents and told him the mayor had special delivery. <laughs> I'm... Get out of this house! <laughs> Poor Poppy never gets a break. And he deserves it. Probably wandering around trying to get up enough courage to come home. Now, you be especially nice to him when he gets here. Sure, Mom. Peg, Peg, Junior! But, Daddy! Get me out! Hysterical! Peg, it happened! I know, Daddy. How could you know? It's a miracle, I tell you. I ain't fired. Oh, Riley! Oh, boy! I, I, I knew if you'd apologize to Steve. Apologize to that weasel? Never. You didn't? Well, then how? Didn't he get the letter? Sure, he got it. What happened? I tell you, it's a miracle. Just as I got there, he was opening my letter. And then? Yes! Well, he looks at the letter. Yes! Then he puts on his glasses and he looks at yes. it. Yes! Then he turns it upside down and looks at it. He can't read my writing. Oh, oh my God. God. No, Peggy. Finally, he gets so mad that he takes the letter, throws it into the waste paper basket and says, that letter must have been written by an illiterate moron. Oh, <laughs> and I the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.